Hello, hello. We are back with Chapter 10, Probability, focusing on Lesson 3, Sample Spaces. And this is the guided practice. So we're gonna, I'm going to do the first two together, and then I'm going to have you do some on your own. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one says, Lindsay flips a coin and rolls a 1 through 6 number cube at the same time. What are the possible outcomes? So we're flipping a coin and... Um, rolling a cube at the same time okay so we want to know what are all the possible outcomes uh, that can occur so uh, the first thing that we have is we have we have heads let's talk about the coin right we basically have two options we have heads or tails so let's go ahead and come up with all of the possibilities for heads first so if um, and we can do this in a tree diagram or a list. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'll do I'll do a list. Okay, so we can have heads. Okay, if we have heads first, H is for heads. We could roll a one. Okay, so that would be one option. Or we could have roll, have heads and roll a two. We could have heads and roll a three. We could have heads and roll a four. We could have heads and roll a five. Or heads and roll a six. Those are all the possibilities for heads. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about tails. So for tails, we would kind of have the same thing. Uh, if we were to flip a tails first, we could uh, roll a one or tails and roll a two or tails and roll a three, tails roll a four, tails roll a five, tails roll a six. So what are the possible outcomes? Those are all of the possible outcomes right there. That would be the answer for problem one. So when I ask you what are all the possible outcomes, it wants you to list all of them out. That's what that is. That's what the question is asking you to do. Okay, uh, let's look at problem two. It says Jordan has a choice of wheat bread or rye bread and a choice of turkey, ham, or tuna. Okay, so um, for bread, we have two options, wheat bread or rye bread. So I'm going to go ahead and just define some terms. Wheat bread... I'm going to call that uh, W for wheat, rye bread, I'm going to call that, uh, what am I going to call rye bread, R, right, that seems reasonable, and a choice of turkey, ham, or tuna, so turkey, um, let's call that a T, Turkey, ham, oh, that's not an H. How do I make that an H? Maybe like that. Okay, so ham is going to be an H. And then tuna, let's see, what should we call tuna? Tu, ooh, I don't know, I'm hearing the U. I'm going to call tuna a U. A U for tuna. Because we already have two T's. So um, I'll call it a U. All right, so let's start with wheat bread. So for wheat bread, maybe I'll do a, um, a, uh, um, a tree diagram. So for wheat bread, I could have, I have three different um, possibilities for meat. I could have, um, what could I have? I could have turkey. I could have ham or I could have tuna, okay? And that ends up being um, wheat with tuna, that's one, or uh, wheat with ham, that would be another option, or wheat with tuna right there okay um, so those are all of the options with wheat 
Okay, all the options for wheat are right here. So let's go ahead and look at all the options for rye bread. So rye bread, you still have the same options for meat. It could be turkey, it could be ham, or it could be tuna. Um, and then that ends up being uh, rye bread with turkey, rye bread with ham, or rye bread with tuna. And there you go. Right there, those are all of the options. So what are all the possible choices of sandwiches we can have? They would all be right here. Those are all the possible um, choices. And that's using a tree, a tree diagram. Okay, so now it is your turn. I want you to go ahead and try problem number three on your own. So there's our friend, the pause dragon, reminding you to pause your device, work out problem three and uh, then go ahead and press play and we'll go over it. All right, we're back. Let's see how you did on problem three. So problem three says Marisol has to decide whether to study Italian, French, or Spanish and whether to take golf, tennis, or archery in gym class. What are the possible choices that Marisol has? Okay. So Marisol has to decide whether to study Italian, French, or Spanish, and whether to take golf, tennis, or archery. What are all the possible choices? Okay, so since we're talking about all the possible choices, what are the possible choices? Um, that means that we're either going to have a um, tree diagram or a list. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and have a tree diagram. The first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and define all my terms. So we have Italian. I'm gonna call that an I. We have French. I'm gonna make that an F. Uh, we have Spanish. Spanish. I'm gonna go ahead and make that an S. And then golf, which would be G. Tennis which would be T, and archery, which would be A. Actually, I think I'm gonna do a list. I did a tree, tree diagram last time. Okay, so I'm gonna start with um, Italian. So let's say uh, Marisol decides to go with Italian, so that would be I, right? Well, she can go Italian with, um, uh, she can, and we kind of have, these are kind of grouped where these are the languages right here, right? Those are the languages, and then these are the, the, um, like, the athletic events or physical education classes. So it has to be one of these and one of those. So, let's see. She could go Italian with golf. That would be one. She could go Italian with tennis. IT, or she go Italian with archery. Okay, so now that's everything for Italian. Um, let's go ahead and go to French. Let's say she doesn't study Italian. Let's say she studies French. Well, she can go French and then study golf, or another option would be French and studying tennis, or another. the last option for French would be study or archery. And let's say she doesn't... Uh, decide to do Italian or French, let's say she decides to do Spanish. Well, if she does Spanish, she could study golf, or she could do Spanish and study tennis, or she could study Spanish, um, study Spanish and study archery. And so those would be all of the outcomes right there. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. So that's how you do that. If you got that right, awesome job. Let's go on to problem four. So we have four, let's do problem four together. So uh, this problem four says, Marcus spins the spinner at the right and flips a dime at the same time. What are the possible outcomes? Oh, okay. We don't have a spinner on the right. So what we're going to pretend is that this spinner down here at the bottom, that is our spinner, okay? 
So we're gonna use that spinner for the spinner at the right. It's just way down there, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see it all. So Marcus uses the spinner at the right, so it's gonna be lower right. We're gonna use this spinner. Anne flips a dime at the same time. What are the possible outcomes? Okay, and then it wants to know how many outcomes are in the sample space. So um, let's start with if uh, a dime, right, has two sides. This is a nickel, but a dime would have two sides as well. It has a heads and it has a tails. So let's go ahead and um, say that they uh, were to flip a dime and get heads. Well, they could spin and get a one, so we could have H1. I'm going to do a list. Uh, we could have flip a heads and spin a two, or the third possibility would be to flip a heads and spin a three. Okay? Now let's say that Marcus doesn't flip a heads, let's say that they flip a tails. So we could flip a tails and spin a one. We could flip a tails and spin a two, or we could flip a tails and spin a three. So those would be all of the possible outcomes right here. And how many outcomes are in the sample space? So that's, that's a key word. When you see how many outcomes, they're asking you to count them all up. So when you see what are the possible outcomes, that means you list out all of the possible outcomes. Okay, when it says how many outcomes are in the sample space, that means you just count them up. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six. There are um, six outcomes in the sample space. And there we go. Perfecto. All right, now it is your turn to um, try five and six, okay? So go ahead and pause your device, uh, work out problems five and six, and when you get done, press play and we'll talk about them. All right, see you in a bit. All right, we're back. Let's go ahead and see how you did on problem five. So problem five says, for lunch, Brittany has a choice of hot dog, a hamburger, or pizza, and a choice of an apple, a pear, or grapes. What are all the possible choices of lunch she can have, and how many possible outcomes are in the sample space? So wh wh what do we have? We have um, a choice of kind of like the main meal, which would be hot dogs, hamburgers, or pizza. And then we have a choice of fruit, which would be apple, pear, or grapes. All right, cool. So, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and label these. So let's go ahead and label them. Uh, we'll call hot dog, we'll call that D because I'm gonna call H hamburger. Hamburger is going to be H. Pizza, I think it's pretty obvious about that one, P. Uh, apple, we'll call that A. Oh man, pear, got another P. Maybe I'll call pizza Z. Yeah, let's call, we're gonna call pizza Z. There's a lot of Z's in pizza. And then pear is going to be P. And finally, grapes will be G. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so you have a choice of one kind of main dish and one fruit. Let's talk about all the possible out outcomes. So let's just go if you get a hot dog first. So if you get a hot dog, I'm going to do a list again. You can get an apple. Uh, if you get a hot dog, you could get a pear. Or if you get a hot dog, you could have grapes. All right. Uh, what about a hamburger? That would be your next one. So if you get a hamburger... You could get an apple. Another option would be a hamburger with a pear. And the third would be a hamburger with grapes. Okay. And, or you could get pizza as your main dish. So you could have pizza with an apple or pizza with pears or pizza with grapes. 
And so what are all the possible choices of lunch she could have? Well, that would be right here. And then it wants to know how many outcomes are there in the sample space? This is the sample space. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine outcomes, which means kind of like options, in the sample space, which is just this group of options. All right, so if you got that one right, awesome job. Let's go on to problem nine. Problem nine says Marcus spins the spinner at the right and flips a, a dime at the same time. What are the possible outcomes? How many outcomes are in the sample space? Okay, so this problem is obviously a duplicate from this problem up here. And um, yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and skip that one for now and go on to the next page. All right. For exercises seven through 10, okay, on this page, we're gonna use the fundamental counting rule to find the number of possible outcomes for each event. So we're gonna do the first two together and then I'm gonna have you do the other two, all right? So, uh, let's see here. Uh, we have Chad and Victoria are playing a game with a quarter and a spinner divided into six, numbers numbered one through six. Each player spins a spinner and tosses the coin. How many possible outcomes are in the game? So, cool. Let's see how the number of outcomes uh, of, um, of spinning the spinner. is going to be multiplied by the number of outcomes of flipping the coin. All right, so um, how many outcomes are there for flipping this, uh, or spinning the spinner, I'm sorry. So it's numbered one through six, it's divided into six regions. So that means there's six options, okay? And that's gonna be multiplied by the number of outcomes for flipping a coin. Well, when you flip a coin, uh, or toss a coin, you have heads or you have tails. There's two options. So there you go. It's gonna be six times two, which is a total of 12, which means there's 12 outcomes in the game. That's all of the outcomes. Boom, there you go. I like the fundamental counting rule. Okay, let's go on to eight. It says for a snack, Sophie can choose milk, apple juice, or punch. Okay, for her, um, those are her drinks, right? Those are the drinks, and then to go with her drink, she can choose a chocolate cupcake, oatmeal cookie, or crackers. Okay, so that's kind of like the little snack. So we got juice and we got snack, okay? How large is the sample space? So if you see that, how large is the sample space, it just wants to know the, what is the number, how many things are in the sample space. So what do we have? We have um, juice, and then we're gonna multiply that by snack. So how many options are there for juice? Well, there's milk. Oh, wait, 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 it shouldn't be juice, it should be drink. I'm sorry, drink. Drink time, uh, multiplied by the snack. So how many options are there for a drink? Well, you have milk, apple juice, or punch. That's one, two, three. So there's three options for a drink. And how many options for a snack? Chocolate cupcake, oatmeal cookie, crackers. There's three. Three times three is nine, and there's nine outcomes. Boom. This is so much easier than making a list. Those ones are fun. Okay, so now it is your turn to try nine and 10. So I want you to go ahead and pause, work these problems out. When you get done, press play and we'll go over the answers. All right, see you in a bit. All right, we're back with problem number nine. Uh, Marva has a spinner divided into force and a one through six number cube. So one of these. Um, she spins the spinner and rolls the number cube. How many outcomes are possible in the game. Okay, so we have the spinner, and that's gonna be multiplied by the cube. So how many options are there in the spinner? Well, the spinner is divided into four, so that means there's four options. And how many sides are there on the cube? One through six means there's six options. So then we just multiply four times six is 24 outcomes. So if you got that one right, Great job, you're amazing, I'm so proud of you. Okay, on to the next one. 
Let's look at problem 10. So problem 10 states, Larry has a choice of vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry ice cream. The choices of toppings are nuts, sprinkles, or coconut. How many one topping sundaes can he make? All right, how many one topping sundaes can he make? So only one topping, okay? So what we have is we have ice cream. The options for ice cream are gonna be multiplied by the options for toppings. So how many options are there for ice cream? Well, there's vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry. So that's one, two, three, multiplied by the number of toppings. Well, we have nuts, sprinkles, or coconut. So um, there would be one, two, three options for there, which we, we would just multiply. Three times three is nine, and so there's nine outcomes. Oh my goodness, if you did that one right, amazing, amazing, amazing. I just have to say, I love the fundamental counting rule. This is so much easier. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next page. So I want you to go ahead and you're gonna be using the fundamental counting rule to find the possible number of outcomes for each event for 11, 12, 13, and 14. So I want you to go ahead and pause your device now, work those problems out using the amazing, wonderful fundamental counting rule. And uh, when you get done, press play and we'll go over the answers. All right, see you in a bit. All right, we're back with problem 11. Uh, let's go ahead and try it out and see how it goes. So problem 11 says Susan and Ryan are playing a game that involves spinning the spinner at the right. Okay, now the spinner's on the right, that's nice. And flipping a penny. This is a nickel, uh, but the penny still has two sides just like this. How many outcomes are possible in the game? Okay, cool. So we're gonna do the fundamental counting rule. So we're gonna take the number of out, uh, ways you can spin this or the outcomes in the spinner and multiply it by uh, the, uh, what, the penny. How many times you can, how many different ways you can flip a penny. So the different options for the spinner are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight options for the spinner multiplied by the penny. You have a heads or a tails, even though this isn't a penny, it's the same idea. So there's two, and then we just multiply them. Eight times two is 16 outcomes. So if you got that right, amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, let's go on to problem 12. Problem 12, problem 12, problem 12. Problem 12 says an Italian restaurant offers small, medium, or and large calzones. The choices of fillings are cheese, spinach, sp Wait, I can't read. The choices of fillings are cheese, sausage, spinach, or vegetable. How many different calzones can you order? All right, cool. So what do we have? We have small, medium, or large, right? Which is kind of like the size. And then um, the filling. So we got sizes and fillings. We want to know how many different possible outcomes are there. Got it. All right, so we're gonna take the size, the options for the size, and multiply it by the options for the fillings. Okay, how many sizes are there? One, two, three, small, medium, large. So three multiplied by the number of fillings, which would be cheese, sausage, spinach, vegetables. One, two, three, four. So there's four fillings. And then the fundamental counting rule says we just multiply those together. Three times four is 12, and we get 12. Um, different, I mean, we get 12 outcomes, which means there's 12 different calzones. All right, all right, if you got that right, wonderful job. Okay, let's go on to 13. It says, what does 13 say? There are five ways to go from town X to town Y. There are three ways to go from town Y to town Z how many different ways are there to go from town X to town Z? Okay, passing through town Y. There's a lot of towns going on here. Okay, so let's look at all the different options. So we have how many different ways are there to go from town X to town Z passing through town Y? Okay, so I'm just going to draw this. We have town X to town Y. Okay, so if you go from here to here, there are three ways. No, there are five ways to go from town X to town Y. So five ways, there's five ways there, okay? Uh, there are three ways to go from town Y to town Z. I'm gonna put Z up there just for fun. 
Okay, so there's three ways to do that. How many different ways are there to go from town X to town Z passing through town Y? So you have to go here to here to here. Okay, cool. So to do that, we're just gonna figure out how many, I'm just gonna call it town, how many X, Y, how many different ways are there gonna, is there to get from town X, Y, from X to Y? And you're just gonna multiply that by how many ways there's to get from town Y to Z. Okay, so there are five different ways to get from town X to town Y. So we go five, multiply by. Uh, the number of ways to get from Y to Z would be three. So five times three is 15. And how many different ways? 15 different ways. 15 different ways. How many different ways? Well, there's 15. All right, if you got that one right, awesome, awesome. Let's go on to 14. 14 says Rashid has tan pants, black pants, gray pants, and blue pants. He has a brown sweater and a white sweater. How many different ways can he wear a sweater and pants together? All right, so we have two different categories. We have pants. We're going to multiply it by sweaters. So the options for pants is going to be multiplied by the options for sweaters. So how many options are there for pants? Well, we have tan, black, gray, and blue. That's one, two, three, four. We're going to multiply that by the number of sweaters. He has a brown sweater and a white sweater, which would be two. So basically, four times two is eight. So how many different ways can he wear a sweater and pants together? We're going to say eight different ways. All right. So if you got all those right, yo, kanaki, mashallah, you did a great job, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.